What's going on, you guys? Welcome to the channel. My name's Eric. Uh, today in this video, we're gonna be talking about spin efficiency. What it is, how to measure it, and how it can make you a better pitcher. Now, before we get into all the fun, if you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button, leave a like and a comment, so you don't miss any baseball content. Spin efficiency is a metric in pitching that measures pitch's true spin as it relates to its movement. So if you have a pitch that spins at 2,400 RPMs total spin, but only 1,900 RPMs true spin, then you know that pitch has low spin efficiency. Now, spin efficiency is measured out of 100%, um, 100 obviously being the best, and league average, I think, is around like 90, 92. Now, this isn't speed. This isn't, you know, how fast the pitch is thrown. This is literally spin efficiency. So to give you a visual, 100% spin efficiency would be a baseball spinning around an axis with no interruptions, right? So cutting clean through the air. Now, this is going to look different for each pitch, but today we're going to be talking about fastballs. So curveballs, sliders, that's its own thing. Their spin efficiencies can vary, and on sliders, you can actually benefit from a lower spin efficiency. But we're going to get into all that in another video. So when we look at a highly efficient fastball, you want to think guys who throw hard and have almost that rising effect. So think like Garrett Cole, Tyler Glasnow, um, Shane Bieber is a high-efficient guy. These guys tend to generate a ton of swing and misses on their fastballs and are effective at pitching up in the zone. And the reason for that is because they have high spin efficiency. Now, spin efficiency is so important on especially four-seam fastballs because that raises the perceived velo velocity. So if you've ever played against a guy who isn't actually throwing that hard, but he seems like, but it seems like the pitch is getting on you a lot quicker it's probably because he has higher spin efficiency. So the more the ball spins, the more efficient that it spins, the faster it's gonna seem. Now there are a couple different ways you can measure spin efficiency. So two of those tools are the Rapsodo and the TrackMan unit. These units are gonna give you numerical data and tell you exactly how much these pitches are spinning, the vertical break, horizontal, horizontal break, and spin efficiency. In most MLB ballparks now, you'll see displayed on uh, either the scoreboard or somewhere else in the stadium, all of the pitch metrics. And you'll notice a lot of the guys who throw really hard have these higher spin efficiencies. Now, there are a couple outliers. I know Josh Hader is a guy with a lower efficiency, lower spin rate, but he throws 97 to 100 from the left side, so he can kind of get away with it. But in general, the guys who have higher spin efficiencies do have the better fastball profiles. Now, how can we improve spin efficiency? First, we wanna find out what our spin efficiency is. So if you have access to a Rapsodo or a TrackMan, you wanna find out what your spin efficiency is and remember it. Now, I was a guy who struggled with this early in my college career. When I got to my school my freshman year, I got on the Rapsodo unit and my spin efficiency was like 83%. So not horrible, but definitely had room for improvement. Now, after this bullpen, my pitching coach and I met, and he asked me if I had a Sharpie and a baseball. Now, obviously, the answer was yes to that. So he said, good, and you can improve your spin efficiency. So with me here, I have the exact baseball that I use to help me go from 83% to 100% spin efficiency and get a ton of swings and misses on my fastball that you'll see right here. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna draw a big line going through the middle of the baseball with the Sharpie and color it in, okay? Now for me, you'll notice the line is going through the middle of the baseball on a four seam axis, cause I was a four seam. So if you're a guy who throws the two seam and you're just gonna spin it around, draw it around the two seam axis. So what I did was in catch play every single day, put my fingers, right on the outside of the mark with the marker, and I just threw it to my partner. Now, this gives you immediate visual feedback because if your spin efficiency is low, the line will look like it's wobbling. But if it's high, then it's gonna spin clean and true. 
Now, you can amplify these results by setting up an iPhone or just a regular old camera or whatever phone you have behind you and record in slow motion. So you'll be able to see the ball coming off your fingers the correct way, hopefully, and the baseball spinning clean around that axis. So a lot of problems come about with spin efficiency when guys release the baseball off of one finger before the other. So if you're throwing a four seam and you release the baseball with your middle finger first, that's gonna cause an imbalance on the seam and it's gonna cause the axis to shift to that side. And that's where, you, where you'll see that wobble. That's where you're gonna see a lot of guys cut fastballs. Now it's the same thing with the two seam. If the ball is coming out off of one finger before the other, you're gonna get spin in the direction of the finger that's coming off the baseball last and you're going to get either a cutter shape or the pitch just isn't going to do anything. In general, you want to see both of your fingers coming off of that seam at the same time. Now, alongside using the Sharpie, you can purchase a product like Clean Fuego. Clean Fuego is something that was specifically designed by a guy named Connor McGinnis. Um, his brother's the pitching coach with the Dodgers, actually, or was at least. I'm not sure if he still is. But this is a great product. This is something that I also picked up and you know still use to this day. So Clean Fuego is, as you can see, kind of like a hockey puck. It's kind of like a hockey puck, but has seams to simulate the field of baseball, right? So same principle with this. You're going to release the baseball. You're going to throw it like this. And you're going to want to see that ball flying clean and true, right? It's going to get a little bit of wobble if you're not throwing it correctly. So these are two really good products. Um, obviously, baseball, and all you need is a baseball and Sharpie for the one. Clean Fuego is going to be a little bit better in getting the immediate feedback because it's a little bit easier to see with the colored sides. Now, what I'm showing you here is a list of the guys in the MLB who have the best fastball profiles. Now, what you'll notice is either their vertical break or their horizontal break is going to be a double digit number and the opposite is going to be a single digit. That's exactly what you want to see on a good fastball. Whether it's a vertical break fastball that's going to get that rise or a horizontal break that's going to get either arm side run or some cut, you want to have one side be significantly more than the other. When you get both of those sides being in the double digits, so for example, a 13 vert and a 10 horizontal fastball, that's what you call a dead zone fastball. That's a pitch that doesn't really do anything. It's kind of just a straight fastball and it's very easy for the hitter to pick up. The nice thing about training spin efficiency is once you get it down to a T and you get your efficiency into the mid to high 90s, you're gonna see more break either vertically or horizontally depending on your arm slot, right? Higher guys gonna have more of that vert, lower slot guys gonna have more arm side run. So just to reiterate, spin efficiency, it is a metric that measures a baseball's true spin relative to its movement. You can improve it by using things like this, either a baseball with a line drawn down the middle or a product like Clean Fuego. And it's important because it's going to improve your perceived velocity on your fastball, which is going to make it play a lot harder than it is. And if you already throw hard, this is even better. But if you're a guy who doesn't throw as hard yet, then this is going to be a great metric to have. And if you're not one of those guys who throws as hard yet, you're in the right place. Because at ProSource, we offer remote coaching based around you throwing harder and becoming the best player you can possibly be. So if that's something that interests you, you can book a call with us using the link down below. We'll be happy to talk to you, hear out your situation, and devise a plan to help you become the best player you can possibly be and accomplish your baseball goals. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the video. If you haven't already by this point, go ahead and subscribe, leave a like, and comment any future videos you would want us to do.